We've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks learning about delta G standard. And you were able to calculate delta G standard for reactions from the third law entropy of the products and reactants and the delta H's of formation of the products and reactants. And you were able to use heat capacity data, or rather the delta CP data for a reaction to see how these things were affected by temperature. And the bottom line is that you're able to calculate delta G standard for reactions at a, at a variety of, of, uh, of temperatures. Well, that's fine, but how do we relate this to the equilibrium constant? How do we relate this to chemical reactions? And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So let's look at a reaction. So a reaction and we'll just take a little simple reaction. We'll say we have A and it goes to B. And we know that delta G standard is equivalent to the molar standard Gibbs function for the product minus the molar standard Gibbs function for the reactant A. And what does this mean? Well, the standard means that we've got pure B and it's in its standard state. So uh, the standard state's pure, and uh, basically that means that we're working at one bar. And we have the same thing right here. We have pure A, okay? And we're at one bar. Great. Well, what this sort of says is if we have a graph and we have the reaction progress on the x-axis, and we have Gibbs function on this axis, that we start off with pure A, we go to pure B, and we can imagine the reaction progressing like this. Now there's one problem with that. If we think about the, the picture that would go with this, it would be we start off with a beaker of pure, pure A, and we have an empty beaker. And as the reaction progresses, B would just start filling up this beaker. Well, that's not how we do reactions, right? We don't have um, stuff being just sort of appearing in a second beaker. What happens is the reactant uh, starts forming the product in the same, in the same beaker, and they're going to mix. And this is going to affect the thermodynamics. So real reactions involve mixing, and the consequence of that is going to be that real reactions involve an equilibrium. So let's go ahead uh, and, and say what the how, how mixing affects things. Well, we know that, just to recap from last time, we have a mixing entropy, and at least for ideal mixtures, we could say that Let's go ahead and specify that we're talking about an ideal mixture right now. Delta S of mixing is, at least per mole, is going to be XA log of XA plus XB log of XB. And if we graph that, we get that we look at the mole fraction of B and we look at the delta S of mixing that we have zero if we have pure A or B, but that we have a maximum if we have a mixture. So the entropy of mixing tends to drive a reaction towards an intermediate composition. We can rewrite this if we wanted as the delta G of mixing for an ideal mixture. And we know that is just equal to, uh, if we're on a per mole base, uh, that would just be RT XA log XA plus XB log of XB. If we were to graph that, we can see that uh, as we go from pure A to pure B, in both cases we have zero delta G of mixing, but it, it's negative if we're 
if we're any intermediate composition. So that means if we're going to lower our Gibbs energy, we tend to we tend to mix. We tend to have an intermediate composition because then we can get more mixing. Well, that's going to affect our reactions. So if we look at these two components, A and B, the product and reactant, if we could somehow keep them separated, the Gibbs energy would go smoothly from A to B, and we'd end up sliding all the way down to pure product. In other words, we'd have 100% yield. We know that, in fact, the two things will mix, and their, their Gibbs energy of mixing curve looks like this. If we add these two curves together, we're going to get a curve that looks something like this. So we've got more fraction of B, which in this case is a, is like the reaction progress, right? Because we're making more B as we go across. And we've got pure A over here. We've got pure B over here. And if we add those two curves together, what's going to happen is instead of going smoothly from A to B, we're going to sag down, oops, like that. And the reason we sag below that ideal curve is because of the entropy of mixing, and that leads to a to a negative G of mixing. Okay, so we can see right here, if we go to if we minimize our Gibbs function, we're gonna we're gonna form an equilibrium, and notice the equilibrium is not at pure product. Okay, and that's a consequence of the entropy of mixing. And so we should differentiate between two different things. Delta G standard for a reaction, which in this case we said was the pure, the Gibbs function of pure product minus the Gibbs function of pure reactant, and something new, delta G, not delta G standard, which we're going to define as the slope of this graph. The slope of the reaction progress graph. And notice that the slope is, is, is negative here. So if you're over here, delta G is negative. Well, delta G negative means the reaction goes forward. You can see that. You're going to go keep going down here. Over here, delta G is positive. Well, that means the reaction is spontaneous in the backwards direction. So if you're anywhere on this curve, you're going to go backwards. So we're going to use delta G, not delta G standard, to determine whether a reaction goes forwards or backwards. So it's the criteria of spontaneity for a chemical reaction. Um, and how can we define this? Well, if we define it as a slope, we could say that it is the change in Gibbs function with reaction progress, which in this case is an increase in the number of moles of B. Well, and needless to say, we're keeping uh, temperature and pressure constant. So how can, we, how can we come up with an equation for how the Gibbs function changes as we go forward in moles of B? So how do we get an equation for this slope? Well, we said that it's going to be the slope as we add more moles of B. So we can say that it's the changing Gibbs function with moles of B, constant T and P. Let's go ahead and write what dG is in general. dG we know is equal to minus STT plus VDP plus a term for the chemical potentials and changes of the number of moles for all the different things that are reacting in our system. And because we're working at constant temperature and pressure, we don't have to worry about these terms. And we've only got two components. So let's write this out explicitly as mu A change in moles of A mu B change in moles of B. And we can make a substitution here because we can see in this reaction every time we make a mole of B we're destroying a mole of A. So we can say the change in moles of A is equal and opposite, equal in size, opposite in sign to the to the moles change in moles of B. So let's go ahead and put that in. So we have dG is equal to mu A times minus d mu b, or d n b, plus mu b, change in moles of b. All right, now let's go ahead and, and take the derivative to get that slope. So delta g for the reaction is the derivative of the Gibbs function of 
moles of B, and that's going to be equal to, when we take the derivative here, we can see we get minus mu A, and take the derivative over here, we're just going to get mu B. Or we could just write this as products minus reactants. So the chemical potentials of products minus the chemical potential of reactants gives us our delta G of our reaction. So this is where chemical potential comes in again. It's going to be very, very important. 